be next to Tahrir Square and know that he was a, he used to come to a cafe that was close by, which is amazing. And so I really, it's a real pleasure for me uh, to be here with all the developers. And each time when I think about what is it that Microsoft stands for, I always come back to the origin of our company, which was a Bill and Paul created the basic interpreter. That is what 40 years ago got the Microsoft journey started. And so to me, every time I'm minded of this mission of ours, to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Everything that we do, every product that we build, every interaction we have with our customers, partnerships we foster, draws energy from this mission statement. It's a living guide to everything we do. There are many parts of this that are pretty unique to us. When you think about what is it that we want to contribute, we want to not only empower individuals, but it's also the collective, because after all, the way societies make progress, the way the economies make progress, is not just by individuals, but it's about individuals coming together to create organizations, that create employment, uh, that drive progress. It is also something that we want to do all over the globe. Uh, the fact that even, you know, one of the things when I came in last night to Cairo, I was talking to our local team, is who are all the developers, who are all the partners who have built the ecosystem around the platforms we've created. Uh, to me, that matters a lot uh, when we talk about the planet. But perhaps the most important thing for us is the last part of empowering to achieve more. We want to provide digital technology so that others can use it to empower themselves and create more technology. It can be a student writing a term paper, or it can be one of you as a developer creating an application, a solution. That to us is the real fruition of our mission. It's the realization of our mission. That's what gives us energy. That's what drives uh, what we do at Microsoft. And to me, going forward, the same mission is what's driving the high ambition we have in three concrete areas. And before I talk about the areas themselves, it's important for us to recognize the technology era that we live in today, and that's going to shape the future of computing in the years to come. I describe it as a mobile first, cloud first world. But it's perhaps very important to understand what we mean by mobile first. I actually do not think the future of mobility is the mobility of a single device. The future of mobility is the mobility of the human experience across all of the computing in our lives. Think about it. We're going to have computing that is going to be more on our wrists, there's going to be computing that we're going to wear on our eyes, there's going to be computing in your ears, there's going to be general purpose sensors in rooms like this, there's going to be small screens, large screens, so computing is going to be ubiquitous. And what is going to matter is the ability of the human being to actually cross all of this computing, access all of this computing, have their apps and experiences transcend one screen. That is what, of course, can get orchestrated because of the cloud. That's why we think of both the mobility revolution as well as the cloud revolution happening together. In fact, they feed off of each other. That is the world view we have. Even when we think about the cloud, we are, of course, bringing the compute storage and network, which is the core building blocks of technology for the, uh, running all the application experiences uh, that you all are building in a very 